I will bless those who bless you. I will curse him who curses you. And you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Now here's what we've done in the American church. We've read this and went, oh, Israel. God bless Israel. Look at them, man. They, we're, we're jealous. We're jealous of a nation whose God took their temple away. We are jealous of a nation in America whose God said, your system doesn't work anymore. I'm going to get rid of it. And we're jealous of them. Do you realize that their blessing only comes through faith? And guess who else's blessing only comes through faith? Sounds like we're on the same, we got the same daddy. And we're sitting back believing that God's blessing is different on somebody else than it is on us. No, 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 no. You're insulting the finished work of Jesus. Let me ask you, why did Jesus need to come and die if he wasn't going to accelerate you into the same blessing as Israel? What was the purpose of all of this finished work business if it still made you second-class citizens? What is the purpose of him wooing you, dating you, marrying you, if he really is in love with the woman that won't have anything to do with him? Can you see how messed up interpretation of the finished work has even messed up our end times philosophy? That God is going to get so tired of this second-class citizen of a bride that he's eventually going to get her out of the way so he can go woo the one he really loves, and then maybe she'll love him. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm insulted that we have so downplayed the finished work of Jesus Christ to the place that we no longer believe what the Apostle Paul thought to be an absolute solid truth. You are blessed with believing Abraham, and no one is blessed with him except by faith. Except by faith, none of you get what he got. But with faith, all of you get what he got. So don't look at Genesis 12, 3 and go, oh man, I wish, we, I wish we had the blessing Israel has. You're insulting the finished work of Jesus Christ. You have exactly what God promised Abraham. Because you're Abraham's seed. I'll bless you and who bless you. Okay, verse 4. Genesis 12, 4. Did I give you verse 4? No? Okay. Go, go, let's go ahead to the life of Abraham. Okay, Genesis 24, 1. Look at this. <laughs> I, I, I put this verse in here because there's so much I can say about Abraham. But I want you to catch what happens when Abraham is just about to die. Because as I was studying, going through the scriptures in Genesis, what I wanted to show you is what your family looks like. Your old covenant. Your, your not old covenant, but this was pre-old covenant. Your grace family from Genesis. Abraham was old, well advanced in age, and the Lord had blessed Abraham in all things. There's your heritage. Right there. There's who you're believing with. You're believing that God can bless you in all things. You believe that? In all things. Whatever I touch my hand to, He's going to bless me in all things. Here's the fascinating thing about your family. Now I'm talking past your name, okay? Because I don't care what your last name is now. You've, we've spent 45 minutes together identifying us as part of the same family. Here's, here's some facts about our family. Abraham believed God and that was counted to him for righteousness. And it didn't completely clean up his behavior. In fact, right after he believed God and it was counted to him for righteousness, he went down into a foreign country, Egypt, and he lied about his wife and he said it was his sister because he was afraid they would kill him so they could marry his very beautiful wife. And instead, they threw his wife in the king's harem of prostitutes. And Abraham slept pretty well that night, knowing that his head didn't roll. And in the middle of the night, God visited Egypt and spoke to Pharaoh and said, Do you realize that the woman you just put in your harem belongs to another man? You better give her back or I'm going to kill you. <laughs> because I'm going to curse who you curse and bless who blesses you. Whoever curses you gets cursed, whoever blesses you gets blessed. And so Pharaoh woke up the next day and comes to Abram and goes, why did you do this to me? This is your wife, not your sister. And Abraham says, because I thought you would kill me if you thought it was my sister. See, you realize what Abraham just did? It was better for you to make her a prostitute than kill me. What a loving husband. And so Pharaoh kicks him out. And in the very next chapter, three verses later, it says, and they left Egypt and they were rich with gold and with silver. Did you realize that God blessed him in spite of his selfish stupidity? Now, am I telling you that you, you should go out and be selfish and stupid? No, I'm telling you that sometimes you are. 
and, and, and most of us being honest would at least nod our head. Yeah, yeah, well, that's me. Yeah, I got a little bit of that in there. Yeah, so, I'm not going to lie. Uh, selfish and stupid. And yet, God blessed your first father, Abraham. Why did God do that? Because Abraham believed God, and God counted that to him for righteousness. Now, you would think he learned his lesson, but later in life, when he went to the place of Abimelech, he did the exact same thing again. Didn't learn his lesson. Sometimes you don't learn your lesson. And we're taught under the world system, you get one chance, but you don't get two. Or maybe you get two, but three strikes and you're out. But under God's system, he blesses you because of faith, not performance. This is good news. There's your first father. He has a son named Isaac. Isaac's name in the Hebrew means laughter. And God called him Isaac for such a funny reason. You don't think that God has a sense of humor. God told Abraham, who was 100 years old, that he was going to have a child. And Abraham didn't believe it um, because the person he was supposed to have a child with is his wife, Sarah, and she's 90, and she's too old to have kids. And so they laughed at God, and God made it happen anyway. And when, they were, when the baby was born, he said, name it Isaac, because I want you, every time you look at that little kid, I want you to remember that I laughed. It's not just that you laughed. I, want you, I laughed that you didn't believe on me. And yet, I gave you the kid anyway. Why? Because Abraham believed God, and it was counted to him for righteousness. And his kids were blessed because they were his kids. So Isaac now goes along, and he's blessed. And the word doesn't give us a whole lot about Isaac, except God brought him a bride by divine intervention. And Isaac has two sons, Jacob and Esau. And you know the story of Jacob and Esau. And where naturally the path should follow Esau, because he's the eldest, the path follows Jacob, the cheater, whose name means deceiver, heel catcher, supplanter, Jacob. And yet the, the, the story arc of the Bible follows Jacob to show you that even, even though your earthly identity is wrong and terrible and bad, your spiritual identity is how God's blessing you, not your earthly identity. Because in earth, we would have picked Esau. Stronger, bigger, handsome, more talented. He's the man's man. He's rugged. He lives outdoors. He kills animals. He roasts them over an open fire. He's the tough guy. Jacob, soft skin. Mama's boy lives in the tent. Soft hands, probably talks like a girl. And yet the story of the Holy Spirit follows Jacob, the wrong kid. Because God's favor doesn't flow in the mannerisms of man. It flows where it flows. Through grace. And so God touches Jacob. And Jacob doesn't even believe in God. Read the story. I wish we had time to preach Jacob properly. Jacob, at one point in his life, is praying and says, if you'll do this for me, I'll believe in the God of my fathers. He doesn't say my God. He says the God of my fathers. I don't even really know if you're real. But I've been taught my whole life. Listen, I've been taught my whole life that I'm somebody special because of who my grandpa was. So if that's true, bless me. And lo and behold, give me my next one. Genesis 30, 25, it came to pass when Rachel had born Joseph that Jacob said to his father-in-law, send me away that I might go into my own place in my own country. 26, give me my wives and my children for whom I've served you. Let me go for you know my service, which I've done for you. 27, and Laban said to him, please stay for I have found favor in your eyes. I've learned by experience that the Lord has blessed me for your sake. Your very name means cheater and I can't figure out why, but the Lord blesses me. When I'm around you. 28. Then he said, name me your wages and I'll give it. 29. <laughs> Jacob said to him, you know how I've served you and have how your livestock has been with me. 30. What you had before I came was little and it has increased to a great amount. The Lord has blessed you since my coming. And now when shall I also provide for my own house? The Lord has blessed you since I showed up. Jacob may not have understood much about it, but he knew who his daddy was. Listen, you don't have to have all the knowledge of covenant. Just know who your daddy is. So I don't understand. Pastor Paul teaches this stuff, and I don't understand it all. I'm learning, but what I do know is who my daddy is. You got all the equipment you need to get started. Because you got a daddy that owns it all.